डॉक्टर राजश्री धुआ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग सो टुडे आई विल बी कवरिंग अ टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू द सब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज इन द 6th सेमेस्टर दैट इज इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड हाइब्रिड व्हीकल सो टुडेस टॉपिक विल बी बेसिक्स ऑफ व्हीकल परफॉर्मेंस एंड मैथमेटिकल मॉडल टू एनालाइज व्हीकल परफॉर्मेंस नाउ मूविंग टू व्हाई इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड हाइब्रिड व्हीकल्स आर नाउ इट इज सो वेरी मच कॉमन that is because we are totally dependent upon ic engine vehicles which rely on fossil fuels and fossil fuels are getting depleted day by day so we need certain alternatives in the form of hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles which are using battery sources or fuel cells which are renewable energy sources as their fuels so they are actually reducing the carbon emission the fuel consumption is also reduced and overall the vehicle efficiency is increased today i will be discussing the topic which is actually the basics of vehicle performance so as we can see that the conventional vehicles they are actually uh, what they are uh, doing they are gradually reducing our uh, fossil fuels and they are also increasing the carbon footprints and uh, post covid situation what is happening that each and every citizen in the different parts of the world they are owning their own vehicles so the more the vehicles are there in the road the more the carbon emission so we need some alternatives and that's why this topic electric and hybrid vehicle is so very much important nowadays so moving to the next part that is the convention of vehicles i have already said that these are ic engine vehicles like compression ignition engine vehicles Uh, for mineral diesel and bio diesel and spark ignition vehicles which are dependent upon petrol ethanol or methanol blends now before going into the details of the electrical and hybrid vehicles i would like to deal with the topic which is nothing but the basics of vehicle performance now for this topic what we need to have an idea the idea goes back to newton's law that is the newton's second law of motion which states that the acceleration of an object is proportional to the net force exerted on it whenever a vehicle is moving there are certain forces that oppose the motion of the vehicle and how the vehicle overcomes this opposing forces and gradually accelerates that will be our topic of discussion today so as we can see that acceleration of the vehicle is dependent upon the power delivered by the propulsion unit the propulsion unit is the different types of the electric motors also on the road condition because if the road is bumpy and it is not smooth our vehicle performance decreases also the aerodynamics of the vehicle on that acceleration is dependent and also on the composite mass of the vehicle so how this is dependent that will be analyzed by a mathematical model so in the next part this is the simple part so as we can see that there are several forces that are working on the car and these forces are given by this uh, denomination so what are the forces there will be forces acting on the mass of the vehicle on the wheels so nr is the normal force on the rear wheel now for a vehicle which is moving in this direction this is the front wheel and this is the rear wheel so there will be forces that will be there both on the rear wheel as well as on the front wheel so nr is the normal force on the rear wheel n F is the normal force on the front wheel. F R is the traction force or the friction force on the rear wheel. F F is the traction force or friction force on the front wheel, and there will be a gravitational force which is acting on the center of mass of the vehicle, and also there is a drag resistance which is also acting on the center of mass. So when a vehicle is accelerating in the forward direction, it has to overcome all these forces that oppose the motion. one important thing is to note is that the gravity is acting on the center of mass of the vehicle but the normal force the traction force and the braking forces are acting on the contact area of the wheels that is the wheels are moving on the road so for that reason we need a rigid model for the frame of the vehicle because if the vehicle is not a rigid model when these forces are working the vehicle uh, uh, the vehicle performance will degrade so in the next slide this entire thing will be mathematically expressed so what we are doing is that this is a typical model of a vehicle one important thing has to be kept in mind that whenever we are analyzing the basics of the vehicle performance we are considering that the vehicle is moving uphill which has a slope alpha so the uphill movement of the 
vehicle is our basics of the vehicle performance. So as we can see that the Newton's second law as I have already said this will be our fundamental or the base for analyzing basics of the vehicle performance. So according to Newton's second law this is the velocity. So rate of change of velocity is acceleration which is nothing but summation ft minus summation ftr by delta mp. So what is ft? ft is the traction force. FTR are the resistance forces, MV, MV is the total mass of the vehicle that is this one which is acting downwards, delta is a mass factor. To the main important thing is that the mass factor is needed for converting the rotational inertia of all the rotational components into the translational mass. This has a certain value which we need to multiply and V as we know is the vehicle speed and also FW is there. FW is the friction due to weight. So as the vehicle is moving upwards, so our direction of movement is this. So there are several forces which are acting in the opposite direction. So one will be the wind force. Also there will be rolling resistance. Besides there will be force due to this slope. So all these forces will try to pull the vehicle downwards. So if our net tractive force moving in the upward direction is greater than the resistance forces then only we can move the vehicle uphill with a suitable speed and the vehicle can properly accelerate. So all these terms will be now explained. So as we can see that the resistance of the vehicle will have certain components. The primary three components are the uphill operating resistance, then aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. So this FW as I have already explained is the aerodynamic drag which is dependent upon the shape of the vehicle to overcome the wind resistance because when we are moving in the uphill in this direction there will be wind forces which will be thrusting certain uh, pressure on the vehicle movement. So if we can overcome this force then only we can move upwards. Also there is the rolling resistance. This is the rolling resistance between the road and the tire. The vehicles are moving upwards. So what happens is that there will be some rolling resistance which is dependent upon the tire material and the nature of the road. And the last but not the least in our analysis what we are thinking is that the vehicle is moving upwards. So if it is moving upwards it has to move up a slope. So this value alpha is nothing but the uphill resistance which is dependent upon this value alpha. So once a vehicle is moving in a smooth road, it is easy to accelerate the vehicle. But whenever we are trying to move the vehicle in an upward direction with a certain slope, so that will be a little bit difficult if we do not analyze each of these resistive components which basically have uh, tried to uh, reduce the acceleration of the vehicle. So if the vehicle actually needs to accelerate, so all these three resistance components we need to have an idea as to how they are working and what are the mathematical expressions of it. So, we move on to our first component of resistance which is the grading resistance. Now this grading resistance is actually creating a component which is dependent upon MV that is the mass of the vehicle. So what we can say that whenever the vehicle is moving in this manner that is upwards its weight will produce a component which is directed downwards because the center of gravity will pull it downwards. So the vehicle performance analysis as I have already said we are only considering the uphill movement. So what we can write is that Fg that is the grading resistance force is nothing but mvg sin alpha means this component. So vehicle is moving upwards this component is opposite to the direction of the vehicle so we need to overcome this component. And also to simplify the calculation what we are doing is that this value we have taken as capital H, this value we have taken as capital L, so this is alpha. So what we can write is that H by L will be nothing but tan alpha and if the road, uh, this road angle or the grade angle is considered to be small, so we can write this tan alpha as sin alpha. So this component will be mvg sin alpha. So if we have value of mv and value of alpha so we can easily find out the value of the grading resistance. Now there are other two more components which is the aerodynamic drag and also the rolling resistance. 
So these components and their discussion will be carried on in the next class.